Right. Thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, I'd like to get started. Uh, this is Rui. Rui will take you through uh, an introduction of, as to who he is, rather than uh, me bodge it up. Um, this is uh, strength and conditioning seminar. We're looking to give information to parents, coaches, and players uh, about how they can hopefully prolong their playing career. Um, we're not looking at it though as, although we're a football club, we're looking to produce footballers, we're looking at it as um, can we actually improve children's health, their physical health, their strength, their physical health, which will have knock-on effects on their mental well-being. Can we keep them playing football? And if not football, can they continue to play sport into their older years, which will keep them fit, healthy, strong, protect them, give them a long life, a uh, long and healthy life. So all these things that we're looking at um, as like a holistic approach to, uh, to our coaching and, and what we provide here. So um, I'll move on, um, let Ruby take over, and we'll have questions at the end if you need to ask anything. Thanks, Sam. Um, yeah, so uh, thanks for coming along. Um, I'm Rui, I'm a strength conditioning coach. Um, so currently, probably see over 200 youth athletes a week on a weekly basis. Um, from several different sports, from professional to youth, as long as eight, probably the youngest. Um, and I also deliver on a, on a degree program where uh, it's in sport health and exercise science, but my background is primarily on strength and conditioning and athletic development. Um, that's kind of the area I tend to specialize more in, but then I dabble in lots of, lots of other things. Um, so today is, so just so I get a bit of an idea, we've got a mixture of coaches, parents, um, and different age groups, right? So what I'll do is I'll keep it relatively open for discussion um, so that we can maybe individualize things a little bit more as I, as I go through it. So in terms of the topics, we'll cover, um, so the importance of SNC in youth athletes, um, understanding what... Um, long-term athletic development is. Um, we'll talk about growth and maturation considerations. So the growth spurt so from, you know, as, as soon as you, you start playing all the way up until adulthood, what are some of the things that we can expect, some of, some of the challenges and how, can, how we can help these athletes and help them overcome these hurdles. Um, we're gonna look at football and growth related injuries as well. Um, and then at the end, we'll look at delivering effective warm-ups um, for performance and injury risk management. So that's kind of where we're going to go with it, with it today. Uh, but feel free to you know, ask questions as we go along. Um, so in terms of strength and conditioning, so what's the point to really simply... Well, before I go into that, actually, what is strength and conditioning? So when people ask me, so what do you do for a living? Um, sometimes it's easier to say, yeah, I'm repeating. That's, that's what I do. It's, it's a little bit different, it's, it's more of a specialised area, more working with, with, with athletes, um, and it's not lift, just lifting weights. Um, people think we're going to get kids, we're going to get them to lift weights, or I've seen some videos on social media where there's kids doing crunches and bits and pieces and people think that's what it is. That's far from it, that's, that's, that's not what strength and conditioning, and when, when done right, that's not what it is, and I'll go over what that is in a minute. And our role with it is to improve performance, but also to reduce the risk of injury. Or I don't like the term reduce, it's more manage the risk, because there's lots of things that go into it and we can't completely get rid of it. Um, but it's more managing it. In terms of improving performance, we're looking at primarily with youth, primarily long term. We don't want them to be amazing at 10. We don't want them to be amazing at 12. Is how good can they be when they're 18 and sometimes we need to take two steps back uh, or one step back before we can take two steps forward. Um, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a, in a minute. We're looking at things like power, speed, agility, flexibility, and I'm gonna go over what we should be focusing on primarily at different stages of their development as well. Um, so, probably aware of the four corners. So you've got technical, tactical, the uh, psychological, the physical, and the social. I don't like to look at these in isolation. As Andy said, uh, having a holistic approach. But the way I like to see the physical is the key that unlocks many doors. Primarily, 
when we think about technical and tactical. Right? I'll give you an example. You take a kid that is generally quite slow, right? They might be very tacti tactically aware, but they'll naturally choose not to do certain things in the game because they don't have the physical capability to do it. And a coach might think that kid's not very tactically aware, he didn't make that run, but actually the reason he didn't make that run is because in their head, they didn't perceive that they could actually, they don't have the physical capability to make that run. So if I'm a striker, and I know I can't really get behind, I'm probably not even gonna try. So by giving them different physical attributes, we're gonna, tech, we're gonna automatically unlock lots of different options from a tactical and technical standpoint as well. Um, hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. And we make them into a much better player, not only physically, that needs to be developed, but as they develop physically, we need to also open up, open the doors to match that. Um, so, misconceptions. Um, so, lift, in terms of weightlifting and strength conditioning, uh, that it damages um, essentially growth plates uh, in, in children. That's been debunked, uh, especially when done properly. All of these things are under supervision and done properly. It stunts growth. No, it doesn't. That's been debunked as well. They used to believe that. Um, and uh, one, of, one of the, it's quite funny, one of the rationale behind that is people tend to say, look at gymnasts, they're all short. And my argument is, well, that, I guess then basketball makes you tall. Because, yeah, I don't, need to, <laughs> I don't need to go over why. But usually we say, you don't pick your sport, your sport chooses you. You naturally go towards the sport you naturally do that. Um, Poses high risk of injury. Lots of research suggests it doesn't. Uh, in fact, even less than playing football. So being in, in the gym is <coughs> has a lower, lower risk of injury than actually playing football. Um, no benefit due to lack of circulating androgen hormones. Basically what that says is, kids don't have testosterone, for example, or as much. So there's no point in lifting weights because they're not gonna get stronger. That's not true. Um, so we develop more neurologically with kids. So it's going to be more neural adaptation as opposed to what we call morphological or structural adaptations. So they can get stronger, they can get faster and all of those things. Um, and no greater benefit to health and performance in adult life. So to go over that last point, this bit of research here says, um, what is it, how young is too young? Um, and the common question I get is how young do they, they need to be before they start strength conditioning? Again, we're not talking about weightlifting, we're talking about strength and conditioning. Strength and conditioning could be something like learning fundamental movement skills. Can they even lunge properly? Can they jump and land? A lot of the kids that I coach on a regular basis, or not on a regular basis, but when I go into schools and, and different places, some of those kids don't know how to land effectively. They, you know, we, we, we don't traditionally teach kids how to jump and land, or how to squat, how to lunge. You know, we're doing, some areas do, but Generally, if you take a kid at random and, and, tell, and tell them to jump and land, the mechanics are probably going to be all wrong. Um, so how young is too young? It's quite tricky to see here, but we've got... I better look at this screen. <laughs> um, so this line... I don't know if you can see that. So this line down here, this dotted line, is kids that um, don't, didn't do any strength conditioning at all or, or play any sport. And this is their adulthood, their participation in sport in adulthood. Okay, so they didn't really play. Um, or their performance the potential as well. Kids that played only sport but didn't engage in strength conditioning, you can see the green line here. Kids that engage in strength conditioning activities during adolescence, so only when they were around 14. Um, you can see it here. And then with kids that engaged in pre-adolescence, so they started maybe when they were 8, 9, 10. You can see it here. Um, this study was conducted in, in 2014. Um, it's quite a popular study and it's been used uh, since as well to show the importance of it. 